so that means article 19 provides different freedom it also provides for imposition of restriction on those freedoms but it also provides So good evening students, my name is Vishal and I am a faculty of Law Optional at Brutus IS. Students, today we are going to discuss <coughs> Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. Students, Article 21 of the Indian Constitution, it is one of those articles that have been given, that has been, that have been given a wide <coughs> and elaborate interpretation by the highest court of this country. Article 21 along with Article 19 and 14 they form the crux of the fundamental rights see <clears throat> the fundamental rights that are granted by the constitution they are of different categories but they belong to certain genus like <clears throat> article 14 till 18 all of them belong to a certain genus that can be called as right to equality so in that article 15 article 16 article 17 and article 18 they are specific rights within the overall framework of right to equality. For example, Article 16 talks about matter of equality in public employment. So now it specifically talks about the equality in matters of public employment or employment under the state. So Article 16 is a species and Article 14 is a genus. In the same way, the constitution provides different freedoms to or various freedoms to the citizens of this country as well as the people who are not even the citizens of this country. Article 21 provides the most important safeguard to life and personal liberty of individuals. Here I am deliberately using the word individuals because the protection to life and liberty that is granted by article 21 it is not limited to only the citizens it is available to every individual that is in india so article 21 if i just read article 21 from the constitution it talks about no person shall be deprived of the life <coughs> of his life or personal liberty except according to procedure established by law so it is just one and a half line long no person shall be deprived of his life and personal liberty except according to procedure established by law now this fundamental right it is just two lines long but this fund article has been given so expensive meaning by the supreme court of this country that we can never wonder that what are the confines or what are the boundaries of this article this article talks about the right of life and personal liberty that means every individual have the right that is granted by the constitution to protection of their life and personal liberty or in other words article 21 states that the life and personal liberty of any individual shall not be taken away or he shall be deprived except according to procedure established by law so now it is saying that no person shall be deprived of his life and personal liberty so there are certain keywords in this article life personal liberty deprivation and except according to procedure established by law that means <coughs> It prevents the life and liberty of a person from arbitrary state action. Now the question arises whether the article itself states 
that nobody can be deprived of his life and liberty except according to procedure established by law now the question arises whether the state by passing a law doesn't matter whether the law in itself is just fair and reasonable can deprive an individual of his life and personal liberty <clears throat> i am i'll again repeat the question arises whether the state by passing a law irrespective of whether the law is just fair and reasonable can deprive an individual of his life and personal liberty so now the, this question the question basically intrigued the court from the very beginning in 1950 we have a case called as ak goplan versus union of india or in short we can call it ak goplan case now in this case <clears throat> the interpretation regarding article 21 was sought to be found out by the court or the court basically tried to interpret article 21 of the constitution now the <clears throat> case was in india we had a preventive detention law preventive detention act there was a law in india that provided for preventive detention in short what is preventive detention preventive detention means a uh, detention or arrest of a person on the grounds not of him having committed a crime or an offence but on the grounds but on the grounds that he can possibly commit a crime in future that means pre uh, preventive detention is undertaken or preventive detention of a person is undertaken on the grounds not his having committing a crime but on the grounds that he there is a possibility that he might commit a crime in future that might jeopardize the safety and security of the society at large so the preventive detention is undertaken not to punish a person but to prevent him from committing an offense so there was a law preventive detention act and the question regarding the validity of the law was <clears throat> presented before the supreme court now the parties contended the parties to the case contended that article 21 provides that nobody shall be deprived of his life and personal liberty <clears throat> the preventive detention law is obviously when you are detaining a person when you are arresting a person obviously his liberty is getting compromised the person has does not have the person no longer has the freedom to move according to his choice he is detained at a particular place or in the custody of the police so obviously the law that provides for preventive detention is depriving personal liberty of a person so now the question is whether the law that deprives a person of his liberty in itself should be just reasonable and fair that means whether the law that deprives a person of his personal liberty whether the law itself conforms to article 14 and article 19 of the constitution article 14 provides for equality before law that means absence of arbitrariness on the part of state or absence of any arbitrary action on the part of the state article 19 provides various freedoms to the citizens of this country and it also provides the <clears throat> limit of restrictions that can be placed on those freedoms so article 19 provide on the one hand provides provides freedom to the people on the other hand it <clears throat> imposes certain restrictions on those freedoms but the restrictions in itself should be reasonable now what are reasonable restrictions the court has in multiple cases stated that reasonable restrictions mean the restrictions that are imposed to an extent what is absolutely necessary for larger public interest that means the restrictions that are imposed only to an extent that is required if the restriction is beyond what is required for the larger public interest the restriction become unreasonable so that means article 19 provides different freedom it also provides for imposition of restriction on those freedoms but it also provides that the restriction should be reasonable the restriction should have a link with the object of imposing 
this section suppose there is a war in this country suppose india and a neighboring country goes to a war so as soon as indian neighboring country goes to war emergency would be declared and in emergency article 19 would be suspended right so now <clears throat> the government can impose restrictions on the fundamental rights of but the thing is ki whether the restriction that are imposed are they absolutely necessary for larger public interest or are they such that they are overburdening the or they are basically acting as a burden on the rights of the people so the court in multiple occasions have stated the restrictions that are imposed on article 19 or the freedoms provided under article 19 they should be reasonable they should be imposed to an extent what is absolutely necessary ठीक है सपोज द इमरजेंसी हैज बीन इम्पोज फॉर अ पीरियड ऑफ टू मंथ्स नाउ द गवर्नमेंट पास इज एन ऑर्डर और गवर्नमेंट पास इज अ लॉ दैट सस्पेंड द फंडामेंटल राइट ऑफ द पीपल फॉर वन ईयर एमरजेंसी वॉज द एमरजेंसी सीज टू बी इन एक्सिस्टेंस आफ्टर टू मंथ्स बट द रिस्टेंट और बट द रिस्टेंट ऑन फंडामेंटल राइट they are extended to a period of one year so there is no relation between the object that was sought to be ob- achieved by imposition of emergency and suspension of fundamental rights and the duration for which the suspend uh, the fundamental rights have been suspended so obviously if the emergency has been imposed for a period of two months the reason necessitates that the fundamental rights or the restriction of fundamental rights or should also be imposed for the period of two months ठीक है ना एज सुन एज द सिचुएशन नॉर्मल द पीपल शुड बी रिस्टोर्ड विद देयर फंडामेंटल राइट सो आर्टिकल नाइनटीन से आर्टिकल नाइनटीन प्रोवाइड फॉर डिफरेंट फ्रीडम एज वेल एज रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन द फ्रीडम एज वेल एज द एक्सटेंट टू विच द रिस्ट्रिक्शन कैन बी इम्पोज नाउ कमिंग बैक टू ए के गोपल द पार्ट इज इन दिस केस कंटेंटेड दैट द लॉ दैट इज डिप्राइविंग in this case the preventive detention act so the law or the preventive detention act that is depriving the people of their individual liberty they should the law itself should be just reasonable and fair because the state is depriving the people of their individual liberty on the basis of that law now the law in itself should be just reasonable and fair that means it should be compliant with or it should not violate article 14 or article 19 but the court in ak gopalan stated no the court stated that the only requirement under article 21 is the existence of a law the existence of a law that deprives a person of his personal liberty that means if there is any law or if there exists any law that deprives the people of the fundamental liberty that in itself is sufficient the law necessarily does not has to be in conformity with article 14 and article 19 so the court in ak gopalan stated that even if there is a law and the law deprives a person of his uh, personal liberty the requirement of article 21 is so for article the requirement of article 21 is met now the court does not want to the court will not review whether the law in itself is compliant with on conformity with article 14 or 19 theek hai so this was a very restricted view that was taken by the court in ak gopalan versus union of india now the question is ki whether the view that was taken by the court was it in conformity with the jurisprudence or the constitutional jurisprudence that is practiced all over the world the court is saying if there is a law and the law provides for deprivation of personal liberty of individual that is enough the court will never review or the court will not get into the intricacies of whether the law in itself is just or reasonable ki jo law hai wo bhi apne aap mein just hai ya nahi because the law is empowering the state to deprive a person of his personal liberty now there is a doctrine of due process of law 
in the American Constitution. The Fifth Amendment of American Constitution provides that no person shall be deprived of his life, liberty, and property except. By following due process of law. By following due process of law. Now here the due process of law means that the law that is depriving the person of his life, liberty and property, the law in its itself should be just reasonable and fair both substantively and provision procedurally and procedurally that means the law that is depriving a person of his life, liberty and property according to 5th amendment of the American constitution, the law in itself should be just reasonable and fair, both substantively and procedurally. That means the law in itself should be <coughs> not arbitrary. And secondly, the law must provide a procedure that is fair. That Fair procedure means it includes certain elements such as the notice should be provided to the accused. Secondly, he should be given an opportunity to be heard. Opportunity to be heard. Third, the tribunal that is adjudicating the case must be impartial. So these things must be must form a part of the law that is depriving the person of his personal liberty. That means in America, if a law is there, suppose a preventive detention law is in America. Okay. So now the law and the law provides for preventive detention. I'm taking a hypothetical example. So in America, going by the interpretation of Article uh, Amendment 5, the law, the preventive detention law of America should be just reasonable and fair. It should not be not. It should be non-arbitrary. Secondly, procedurally, it should provide the notice to the accused. It should provide it the right to be heard or right to be <coughs> heard. Thirdly, it should the law should provide for an impartial tribunal. Okay. So, due process of law is provided under Article Fifth of the or Amendment Fifth of the American Constitution. Now, the question arises is. Okay, why did the Indian courts or why did the Supreme Court in A.K. Gobalan did not interpret the expression procedure established by law as the due process of law? This happened in Menka Gandhi versus Union of India. A.K. Copeland was decided in 1950. Menka Gandhi's versus Union of India was decided in 1978. The nearly same question was in, the nearly same matter or same question was before the Supreme Court this time also. What happened was, the passport of Menka Gandhi was impounded under the Passport Act, under Article, uh, under Section 10 Clause 3 of the Passport Act. The Passport Act or the law that uh, stood then, the Passport Act provided that a passport of a person can be impounded if the person, <coughs> if there is, uh, <coughs> if the person whose passport has been impounded, if he is a detrimental to the security of state, if he is detrimental to the sovereignty of the state, or if the person is detrimental or if the person bears any risk to the friendly relation of India with the foreign state. So in that case, the person passport can be impounded. So now the question here is the passport of Menka Gandhi was impounded. As soon as the passport was impounded, 
she could not go outside the country because obviously the passport is a travel document that is required when you move out of the country theek hai so when her passport was impounded her liberty to move out of the country was severely curtailed so this is a curtailment of personal liberty now reading article 21 it, article 21 states that if a person <clears throat> of the person's personal liberty has to be deprived it should be according to procedure established by law that means there should be a law and by following the procedure that has been provided in the law the state can deprive the person of his personal liberty so now menaka gandhi pleaded before the court that the law that is the passport act it does not provide an opportunity of hearing to main kala she was not provided with an opportunity of adequate hearing before her passport was impounded so now the law the validity of law itself was menka gandhi contended before the court that the law was unjust and reasonable the law does not contain the principles of natural justice principles of natural justice see the principle of natural justice these are certain principles which have been from a long time being considered as elementary in any law that means the law it should contain the principles of natural justice these principles are considered to be so sacrosanct they are considered to be so important so that every law should contain the principle of natural justice and these principles they basically provide for certain opportunities to the person who has been in conflict with the law so principle of natural justice there are two basic principle of natural justice that nobody should be a judge in his own case nemo redux in causa sua and second is every person should be given a right to an <coughs> opportunity to be heard max audi altrum parta so Menaka Gandhi stated that the Passport Act does not contain the principle of natural justice, or the principle of the, <coughs> the Passport Act is not comprised of, or it is devoid of the principles of natural justice. So the question before the court is whether any law that is devoid of principles of natural justice. Now, from the long time, it has been <coughs> the view of the juries and the judges that natural justice. they provide a equalitarian or they provide a humanitarian concept to the law these principles should be embedded in a law devoid of this natural principle devoid of the principle of natural justice a law in itself should become unjust and unjust or non just so now the question before the court is just because the passport act did not contain the principle of natural justice whether on that ground whether the passport act or certain sections of the passport act would be deemed as violative of article 21 now this depended now if the court see the important thing is if the court decided that article 21 mentions about the procedure established by law and the procedure established by law should be read as the american principle of due process of law so when the american principle of due process of law is to be read in the expression of procedure established by law that means the indian laws in itself should be just reasonable and fair before they deprive someone of their liberty now the question dependent all the question before the court was such the court the court has to interpret article 21 in such a way whether it includes the american principle of due process of law or not so now the court gave a fantastic judgment in mentang gandhi versus union of india the court stated that article 21 article 19 and article 14 they form an axis in ak gopalan the court has stated that any law 
which is formulated under article 21 that means that deprives a person of his life and personal liberty that need not be in conformity with article 19 ठीक है सो द वेरियस सेक्शंस दैट आर प्रोवाइडेड अंडर आर्टिकल 19 दे विल ओनली बी अप्लाइड टू द फ्रीडम्स दैट आर प्रोवाइडेड अंडर आर्टिकल 19 द कोर्ट सेड आर्टिकल 21 एंड आर्टिकल 19 इज म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव द वेरियस फ्रीडम दैट आर प्रोवाइडेड अंडर आर्टिकल 19 आर्टिकल 21 डज नॉट हैव एनी लिंकेज विद दोस फ्रीडम्स बट इन मेनका गांधी द कोर्ट स्टेटेड आर्टिकल 21 19 एंड 14 हैज अ नेक्सस दैट मींस If a law is formulated <coughs> taking Article Twenty One as a ground, that means a law deprives a person of his life and personal liberty. There is a law, and it deprives a person of his life and personal liberty. The law, first of all, must conform to Article Nineteen. That means when a personal liberty of a person is denied. obviously article 19 is also violated because article 19 provide for different freedoms so when a person is arrested obviously article 19 is also curtailed or article 19 for that person is deprived so now the question here is or the court basically stated that if a law is made under article 19 it must conform to the restrictions that are provided under article 19 because person is arrested his personal liberty is restricted article 19 provides that if the freedom are to be restricted the restrictions that are provided under article 19 should be <coughs> expressly or should be strictly followed so the court stated when under article 21 a law is formulated and the law is depriving a person of his life and personal liberty then the law itself should conform to article 19 that means various freedom or various restrictions sorry provided under article 19 clause 2 till article 19 clause 6 should be complied with that means the restrictions the grounds of the restrictions and the extent of restrictions that are provided under article 19 2 to article 19 clause 6 should be followed secondly the court stated that any law that is enacted establishing article 21 as the base that mean that deprives a live person of his life and liberty it should also conform with article 14 that means it should not be arbitrary right so now the court stated yes article 21 provides that a person can be deprived of his law uh, life and personal liberty but the law that deprives a person of his life and liberty the law itself should conform to article 19 an article 24 uh, article 14 that means the law in itself should be just fair and reasonable now the passport act in the passport act the act provided when the whenever the pers- in passport of a person is impounded as was the case with minka gandhi whenever the passport is impounded there was no opportunity of heard uh, or there is no opportunity of hearing was given to the person or the concerned person this is an unjust law the law provides that a person should be given an opportunity of being heard so the right courts could have been if under a passport act the passport is impounded the person or the concerned person he should be given an opportunity to present the case to appropriate authorities that why his passport should not be impounded or he should be able to present his case but uh, passport act as stood then the passport act as stood <coughs> before this case the act does not contain any such provision of providing opportunity of being heard. so that means that provision of the passport act was violative of article 21 because the law <coughs> that or the passport act that is depriving a person of his liberty it itself was not just fair and reasonable because it was not providing an enough opportunity of being heard to the concerned person so the court stated yes the expression procedure established by law should be read as due process of law that means now the courts would be 
इफ अ पर्सन लाइफ और लिबर्टी हैज टू बी डिप्राइव और द पर्सन इज डिप्राइव ऑफ इज पर्सनल लिबर्टी इट कैन नॉट बी डन ओनली मेरली ऑन द मेयरली ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ एन एग्जीक्यूटिव एक्शन दैट मीन्स द गवर्नमेंट और एनी ऑफ इट्स एजेंसी बाय देयर ऑर्डर्स और बाय देयर एक्ट ओनली कैन नॉट डिप्राइव अ पर्सन ऑफ इज लाइफ एंड लिबर्टी दैट मीन्स अ पर्सन लाइफ एंड लिबर्टी हैज टू बी इफ द लाइफ एंड लिबर्टी ऑफ अ पर्सन हैज टू बी डिप्राइव इट शुड बी थ्रू अ लॉ one one thing is now it is protecting the liberty of a person from arbitrary executive action that means a police ka man kiya aur usne kisi ko bhi jaake arrest kar liya so it is that is not sanctioned by law what is sanctioned by law is the police need to follow the proper procedure and the police need to follow the substantive provisions of law even after that the even only after that the police can arrest a so one thing is ki now only executive action that is not sanctioned by law or that is never not sanctioned by legislation cannot deprive a person of his individual liberty that means a law has to be there that means for example if the police authorities think that this person is detrimental to the security and <coughs> safety of the security of the state and sovereignty and security of india now only on the basis on the basis of their assumption they cannot arrest a person or they cannot impound the passport of a person there must be a law that authorize the police officers to arrest a person on the ground of his him being a threat to the security of this country so that means a law should be there and law should be passed by the appropriate legislature second question is the second requirement is that the law in itself should be just reasonable and fair that means the court can go into <coughs> reviewing whether the law that is provide uh, depriving a person of his liberty whether in itself is just reasonable and fair if the court deems if the court deems that the law is not just and fair so the court will adjudicate, adjudicate the provision as unconstitutional as being violative of article 21 so the menka gandhi so the menka gandhi basically spawned a new era in the indian constitutional history it provided that the life and liberty of a person is sacrosanct it provided or be it basically <coughs> opened up that the constitution recognizes that the life and liberty of a person is important and significant if the life and liberty if any how the life and liberty has to be curtailed it can be done only on the basis of a law and the law in itself should be just fair and reasonable the law in itself should conform to article 14 and 19 if the law is not conforming to the requirements of article 14 and 19 the law is against <coughs> the constitution the law would be struck down so article 21 now became the flag bearer or <coughs> the foundation on the basis of which the life and liberty of a person in india would be protected right the court and menka gandhi it opened up a pandora box wherein it interpreted the word life as not only living like animal the court stated that the word life just not means living like animals or living a brute existence like animals the court means that human life has dignity attached to it the life of human should be lived in a manner that <coughs> resonates with the highest level of civilization or the life should be or the life should be lived in a manner that is worth living and what is important and those facility those <coughs> limbs that are important to make a life worth living of a human being should be considered as the facility of life itself 
For example, the court stated that the basic necessities of life such as food, shelter or access to education or the freedom to express oneself all of these are those facilities that make the life of a person worthwhile that adds that promotes to the quality of life now <clears throat> right to have food right to have proper livelihood right to have shelter right to express yourself they themselves are on an equal pedestal with life to life so the nakao court basically opened up a pandora box with that the right to life was interpreted in multiple judicial pronouncements in such a way so as to include all the facilities that promotes the quality of life whether it be right to education before article 21a is enacted was the uh, article 21a was enacted by the parliament the court in unni krishnan versus state of andhra pradesh already has stated that the right to education is a part of right to life in the same way in multiple cases such as parmanand katara the parmanand katara the court stated that a right of a person to adequate medical attention or adequate medical care it's itself is a part of life because a person who has who is suffering from an illness or the person who has met with an accidental fortune if the person is not well is he has the right to have adequate medical attention and care so right to livelihood right to livelihood right to adequate medical attention right to <coughs> shelter right to education right to <coughs> reputation even right to privacy this was recognized by the court in case putta sami versus union of india that the individual life and liberty is based upon the right to privacy that to enjoy a life and liberty the right to privacy is very essential the court stated that right to privacy includes certain autonomous choices of a person that means the person has a right to autonomy over his physical body a person has the right to make vital choices of his life the person has the right to privacy right to informational privacy that his personal information should not be disseminated without his approval the court stated the person has a right that the state should not intervene in his physical body the court stated that the person has a right to make appropriate choices of his life the court stated the person has a right to preserve the intimacy of life and <clears throat> to protect his and to preserve his personal relations so all of these things that constitute a life worth living or that adds on to the quality of life were considered as the part of life or the part of right to life itself so that's why menaka gandhi or the subsequent judgments that were given by the coach post menaka gandhi are essential because they coach have in these judgments interpreted the fundamental right in such a way that at fundamental fundamental right of right to life in such a way that it has contributed to the <coughs> increase in protections that are provided to different facilities of life so now right to health is considered as right to life right to clean environment is considered as right to life right to education is considered as right to life so <coughs> that's why menaka gandhi or the entire jurisprudence regarding or the entire jurisprudence revolving around menaka gandhi is important for a law students because it will help you understand that <coughs> how does the court or what does the court feels about the constitutional morality or what does the court feels about the rights that are provided to us by the constitution so with this students we will finish today's lecture so <coughs> i hope you have found this lecture interesting and knowledgeable so for more of such videos please please stay tuned with rutas is thank you